Hello everyone, my name is Strain, and welcome to my review of Ruby Volume 5, Episode 3. Now this episode had a lot of information revealed to us, a little bit of drama, a little bit of setup, and a lot of humor sprinkled out from the middle of the episode. Now, one of the three things that I liked about this episode was the whole speech with uh, Blake Stan and the, Bell the family of the Belladonnas, and how much uh, they are, how much influence they have over the island. And I really liked how the speech gave a little more backstory of the Blake Stad and his time during as the leader of the White Fang, uh, and his uh, relationship with uh, the current leader or former leader, as we saw Adam pretty much uh, took over, <laughs> uh, which is sad, really. And then the fact that even though Cian Khan prefers to go a more aggressive tactic, and while Blake Stad prefers to maintain a more peaceful route, uh, the the same the end goal was the fact that they want to be equals with the human race, as opposed to Adam, who basically wants to subjugate the human race and claim that farmers are the superior race. Which builds tension and that. Uh, now, this tension is also in place the more divided among the finest, and not only that, which direction of the White Fang's future lies in the fact between uh, Blake and Adam, and that is Ilya interrupting uh, Blake's dad's speech, or to say the Bell Downs, they only, the human race is nothing for us. Uh, Adam is the is the correct path for, for the Faunus. And I thought this was a very um, political uh, scene as we get further into the, into the volume and whether or not how the people of the island react. It seems like they want peace and then there's some people who are still angry about the current situation with the humans and they feel like more impl inclined to ally themselves with Adam and Ilya. And I thought that was a great tension between the two. Now, the one thing I said about it uh, being a very fun episode is how Team Ranger re reacted to the fact that uh, Osmond is reincarnating into Oscar and Osmond uh, gave me a full explanation about how long he's been. He's been around for a thousand years. And now this may... Now, now I've been hearing there's a lot of theories around this con his connection with Salem. And it seems that they've been at this... Um, uh, what's the word? Uh, dance between light and darkness, good and evil for pretty much a, for a thousand years since the early days of Remnant. But the one thing I did like about that is that Osborne says um, uh, Team Ranger still needs more training. Uh, Oscar needs to get more physically in shape or to um, be more suited to handle uh, Osborne's uh, years and years of fighting experience or to be well into this new body. And I really liked uh, how they called out, um, Osborne calls out Ruby, that the fact that uh, uh, she, how much she, she loves uh being attached to Crescent Rose, uh, she still can't fight hand to hand, as we to say in Volume Two, and the more recently uh, the Yellow trailer with Yang, pretty much telling her the same thing. <laughs> and I love that she she's fully aware of it, but she kind of makes it all innocent, and makes it a lot more cute and adorable about it. Uh, one thing they they finally addressed this uh, the current situation is that we're, we're we're in the fifth volume already, and we still haven't uh, seen uh, John's uh, semblance. And I like how Osmond pretty much calls him out and then and says, you still haven't uh, uh, revealed your semblance. I mean, this is pretty much getting to the point of, you know, how long we had to wait before we actually get to see him actually be um, a more heroic character than he was in Volume 1. Uh, but he didn't really explain uh, the flaws between Nora and Ren, which was kind of sad. I was hoping that um, probably in the next episode that will be revealed to us what their uh, certain flaws or things they need to work on. Now with Crow, um, he said he needs to get more Huntsman. Now, uh, this might also become a problem as we get further in the series because I also feel that uh, they keep adding new characters and why I'm also so excited to see new characters and make the world quite large. Uh, uh, I think um, Miles and Carrie are overlooking the fact that this is a, this is a web series. Um, there's only like 12 episodes per, se per season and we barely ever got screen time with any other characters. Like for instance, we don't even know what happened to Team Coffee. I mean, what the hell? It's, we don't know what happened to them. And the last time we saw them were in the final battle in the Fall of Beacon, and we had no idea what happened to them. Now, to cap off this review, uh, one thing I also liked is the fact that how White handled herself in the situation involving her, her capture by bandits and her meeting up with the brand new character that has been revealed in the opening, and that is Fenrir. Now she is, I assume, probably. Um, one of Raven's lieutenants or high-ranking officials in among the, the band of thieves. We don't know, maybe she has plans to overthrow Raven just like um, Adam tried to overthrow Sienna Khan. We don't know how that dynamic is going to be. And it was pretty much as uh, as many of you and my, myself have predicted 
that they're going to hold Weiss ransom for the fact that uh, her dad will have to bail her out. Weiss's character development in this series because I feel like this is the moment for her to grow and become a lot more independent as we saw from volume 2 and all the way to where we are occurring right now is that she is growing as a character and not the fact to rely on the fact that her family's money or rely on her big sister to bail her out of situations even though she constantly looks up to her in many ways so this is a great moment for her to grow as a person that uh, she is but despite being more the princess of of team ruby she's still getting better at it and i'm looking forward to her growth because i uh, I truly believe as we get for I think Weiss would probably be, is my top character throughout this whole series and I really liked her character progression overall out of all the other girls. Well, that concludes my review for this week's uh, uh, episode. I can't wait to see episode 4 this week. Hopefully this time around I'll be able to actually post them a lot more sooner than later. But, you know, life, work and everything else, that's, that's very difficult for someone who's still a small YouTuber. Well. Thanks for watching this video and I hope to catch you guys in the next video. Bye.